Welcome brothers and sisters and uh, it's another time we join in in the study of the word of God. Uh, we are going through the series uh, Our Higher Calling and uh, today we are in number four, propriety, uh, propriety in, uh, in prayer. That is number four, propriety in prayer and so i'll go ahead and pray and we start our father which art in heaven thank you lord thank you for giving us this chance again to study thy word as we go through the scriptures through the scriptures we pray that um, you may embrace the truth on our minds and give us the strength to do those things written therein and in inspiration in jesus name amen we are going through uh the series uh, uh higher calling and uh, we are focusing on uh, what can uh, enable us to reach this state of a, a higher calling? And uh, uh, you, you will uh, notice that the first um, three presentations we we just we are de dealing with the prayers, and number four we are continuing with um, the same. And uh, this uh, number four in the gospel in the series our higher calling, I'm looking at uh, true prayer. So let us see. Uh, we are told that uh, there are few who rightly appreciate or improve the precious privilege of prayer. We should go to Jesus and tell him all our needs. We may bring him our little cares and perplexities as well as our greater troubles. Whatever arises to disturb or distress us, we should take it to the Lord in prayer. When we feel that we need, to, we need the presence of Christ at every step, we should make no one our confidant by Jesus. We can safely commune with him of all that is in our hearts. Uh, the, the, the Lord is uh, our Savior and uh, we are his children and so th there is nothing to fear in approaching him in prayer. Wherever we have a need, wherever we have a want, wherever we have a, a thanksgiving, whatever thing that um, we, we may think of, we can really approach the Lord in prayer because he is faithful. Now, uh, I just like to look, to look at something uh, in the book of uh, <coughs> Exodus. Book of uh, Exodus. That uh, there's something that the Lord instituted uh, in the in the nation of uh, Israel, and uh, it concerns. Uh, the sacrificial service in Exodus chapter uh, 29. In Exodus uh, chapter 29, we read this verses that one and thou shalt take the ram of the consecration and sit. No, that is not the verse. Sorry, I'm looking at the um, wrong verse. Looking at the wrong verse, sorry for that. Where actually the Lord uh, uh, establishes uh, the mornings and the uh, evening. Okay, I'll get it to you, but uh, I wanted to to talk about uh, the morning and the evening sacrifices. The morning and the evening sacrifices. And uh, the Lord uh, gave... Uh, Moses an instruction about uh, sacrificing about uh, sacrificing and let me see if uh, I can get it it's in the book of Exodus uh, Exodus chapter 29 
verses uh, 38 and 39. Now this is what we that now this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar, two lambs of the first year, uh, day by day, continually, day by day, continually. Verse 39. The one lamb thou shalt offer in the morning, and the other lamb thou shalt offer at um, even in, in instituting this because we are looking at uh, uh, true prayer uh, I'd like you to notice uh, something in uh, Patriarchs and Prophet page uh, 353 paragraph 3 I want you to notice something and uh, I hope uh, it will be big enough for you on the screen. So let me put it on the screen so that uh, we may share together. We are looking at uh, true prayer. And uh, the Lord uh, instituted uh, the morning and the evening sacrifices according to Exodus chapter 29, verse 38 and 39. And look at what uh, the prophet says. That uh, as the priests morning and evening entered the holy place at the time of incense the daily sacrifice was ready to be offered upon the altar in the court without this was a time of intense interest to the worshipers who assembled at the tabernacle before entering into the presence of god through the ministration of the priest they were to engage in earnest searching of heart and confession of sin they united in silent prayer with their faces toward the holy place Thus their petitions ascended with the cloud of incense, while faith laid hold upon the merits of the promised Savior prefigured by the atoning sacrifice. The hours appointed for the morning and the evening sacrifice were regarded as sacred, and they came to be observed as the set time for worship throughout the Jewish nation. And when in later, later time the Jewish were scattered as captives in distant lands, they still at the appointed hour turned their faces toward Jerusalem and offered up their petition to the God of Israel. In this custom, Christians have an example for morning and evening prayer. While God condemns a mere round of ceremonies, without the spirit of worship, he looks with great pleasure upon those who love him, bowing morning and evening to seek pardon for sins committed and to present their request for needed uh, blessings. So, uh, the morning and the evening sacrifices actually teaches us uh, uh, the morning and uh, uh, evening uh, uh, prayers. Also, when you look at um, Child Guidance, the book uh, Child Guidance, page um, 520, paragraph 1, I think so. Uh, this is what we find in Child Guidance. In every family, there should be a fixed time for morning and evening worship. How appropriate it is for parents to gather their children about them before the fast is broken, to thank the Heavenly Father for his protection during the night, and to ask him for his help and guidance and watch care during the day. How fitting also when evening comes for parents and children to gather once more before him and thank him for the blessings of the day that is past. So, we, we should be having a set times of prayer and uh, we know that uh, the Lord is pleased when we are orderly when uh, we are orderly in uh, in our work and uh, you find that uh, when uh, you look at uh, the book of Daniel too. When you look at the book of Daniel again, uh, let us go to chapter 6. The book of Daniel chapter 6. And let us look at something. Daniel chapter 6, verses... Daniel chapter 6, verses 10. Uh, this is about when... Uh, Daniel was to be thrown in the den of lions. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into the house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God 
as he did aforetime. So he had a set time of prayers and he continued in it, whichever circumstance that he was in. And this is teaching us that we don't have an excuse for not having set time of prayers or uh, whether we are traveling, whether we are at work, whether there is anything that we are doing. We don't have a, a reason why we should not be praying unto the Lord. We look at, also at the book of Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, Daniel is praying and he is seeking the Lord in prayer for the children of Israel and the abomination they had done and the end of the uh, seventh year of captivity. And uh, uh, listen uh, at uh, verse 20, Daniel chapter 9. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain, for the holy mountain of my God, yes, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. So uh, uh, we see that. Uh, uh, Daniel had set times of prayer, and also as uh, uh, the children of God, uh, we, we we are to have set times of prayers. We have to have set times of prayer to the Lord. We don't have an excuse, but uh, we must have a set time of prayers. David, too, in the book of Psalms, had uh, uh, times of prayers. We are looking at uh, uh, the series, Our Higher Calling, and today we are looking at uh, we are looking at uh, true prayer and um, having set times of prayers and how we should approach the Lord in um, uh, in prayer. And so we can commune with the Lord. Because he is our God. Steps to Christ, page 93. Steps to Christ, page 93. This is what uh, we find. Prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. Not that it is necessary in order to make known to God what we are, but in order to enable us to receive him. Prayer does not bring God down to us, but it brings us up to him. This is the higher calling. When Jesus was upon the earth, he taught his disciples how to pray. He did, directed them to present their daily needs before God and to cast all their care upon him. And the assurance he gave them that their petition should be heard is assurance also to us. Something, it is a mark of humility to pray to God in common manner, as if talking with a human being. They profane his name by needlessly and irreverently mingling with them their prayers, the words, God Almighty, awful, sacred words, which should never pass the lips except in subdued tones and with feeling of awe. And so we find that um, the name of the Lord is to be reverenced in uh, uh, when we are praying to the Lord. We don't have to mention the name of the Lord the way we just want it, but um, with the subdueness and with the reverence, we don't have to do repetitions in our prayers. But uh, when we are mentioning the name of the Lord, we have to have some propriety in our worship and uh, in our, our prayers. God is in heaven and we are on earth. We are the dust of the earth and the earth is his footstool and he is in heaven with his throne. We should be careful how we mention the name of the Lord in prayers. It is with reverence that we should call upon the name of the Lord. Testimonies to the, for the church, volume 7, uh, page 239. Private prayer, family prayer, prayer in, in public gathering for the worship of God are all essential and we are to live our prayers we are to cooperate with christ in his work so it's not just about uttering words before the lord but practicing what you pray in your prayer and uh, continued on testimonies for the church volume 2 page 189 family or public prayer alone is not sufficient secret prayer is very important in solitude the soul is laid bare to the inspecting eye of god and every motive is scrutinized. Uh, secret prayer, how precious, the soul communing with God. Secret prayer is to be heard only by the prayer hearing God. No curious ear is to receive the burden of such a petitions. 
In secret prayer, the soul is free from surrounding influences, free from excitement, calmly yet fervently will it reach out after God. Secret, secret prayer is frequent, perverted, and it is sweet designs lost by loud vocal prayer. And so, uh, if we want to pray, have a secret prayer, let us enter in our chambers and uh, pray unto the Lord who hears our petitions and uh, he will be able to answer us. He will be able to, uh, to answer our prayers. And uh, we are talking about true prayer and propriety in, in prayer. There is no time or place in which it is appropriate to offer up a petition God, to God. There is nothing that can prevent us from lifting up our hearts in the spirit of honest prayer. In the crowds of the street, in the midst of a business engagement, we may send up a petition to God and plead for divine guidance. A closet of communion may be found wherever we are. We should have the door of the heart open continually and our invitation uh, going up that Jesus may come and abide as a heavenly guest in the soul. And so you can uh, say that the place is not appropriate for prayer. You can offer silent prayer to God and uh, he is sure he will, able to, he will be able to hear you. Pray in your closet and as you go about your daily labor, let your heart be often uplifted to God. It was thus that Enoch walked with God. These silent prayers rise like precious incense before the throne of grace. Satan cannot overcome him whose heart is thus stayed upon God. And uh, we find that um, Satan will not be able to defeat the person whose heart is uh, uh, always in uh, sync with the uh, uh, Lord. And... Uh, we should always cultivate a heart of prayer. Whatever, whatever we are we are doing, we should cultivate a, a, a heart of praying to to the Lord every every time. And uh, we look at the example of uh, the example of uh, Daniel praying, and uh, also uh, the Bible tells us about. Um, uh, David also praying to the Lord often. And uh, you look at uh, the book of uh, Psalms, the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms 27, look at what he says, Psalms 27, verses uh, 4. One thing I have desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. So he delights being in the presence of God. It's not just about uh, uh, it's not just about being in the temple, but uh, praying uh, to the Lord often. And uh, look at um, Psalms 119, 164. Psalms 119, 164, the book, the, the division of Psalms 119, 164. It says, Seven times a day, seven times a day do I praise thee because of the righteous judgment. So this guy, seven times a day, he could offer his prayer to, to the Lord. He could offer prayer to the Lord. And it didn't matter where uh, David was. He, he uplifted his heart unto the Lord. Also, when you look at um, uh, the division of Psalms 55, verse 17. Division of Psalms 55, verse uh, 17. I hope you are getting blessed the, with the issue of prayer. 55. Verse 17, it says, Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. And so evening, morning, and at noon I'll pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. This, is, this was the custom of David. This was the custom of Daniel. And it should be our custom. We found out in PP that um, by the institution of... Uh, of uh, uh, of the um, 
morning and the evening prayer uh, sacrifices it was to teach us about um, uh, about uh, morning and evening prayer so whoever that is actually in conduct with god satan cannot overcome him satan cannot overcome him the way to the throne of god is always open you cannot always be on your knees in prayer we are looking at propriety uh, in prayer and the series is our higher calling how what shall we do to reach the mark that God has set before us. And we shall be looking at uh, various things. We are not just going to look at prayer, but we shall look at also some various things in this series. But um, we are laying a foundation so that when we reach at the other things, you know that when even you do them, you will be able to be heard in your prayers. Amen. The way to the throne of God is always open. You cannot always be on your knees in prayer, but your silent petition may constantly ascend to God for strength and guidance. When tempted as you will be, you may flee to the secret place of the Most High. His everlasting arms will be underneath you. So the Lord is always open to hear us. Counsels of, on health, page 362. Um, in every family, there should be a fixed time for morning and evening worship. How appropriate it is for parents to gather their children about them before the fast is broken, to thank the Heavenly Father for his protection during the night, and to ask for his help and guidance and watch care during the day. How fitting also when evening comes for parents and children to gather once more before him and thank him for the blessings of the day that is past. Child guidance, page uh, 520. Uh, and... Uh, we, we find that um, um, family worship should not be governed by circumstances. You are not to pray occasionally and then you have a large day's work to do neglected. In thus doing, you lead your children to look upon prayer as of no special consequence. Prayer means very much to the children of God and thanks offerings should come up before God morning and uh Evening. This is so important, brethren. The, the, the way you will behave in your Christian life, that is what you will impart on your children. That is what you will impart on the people that actually are living with you and the people that you are living with. And so if you neglect the things that actually moves you and can help you have a higher Christian experience, that is what you impart to the people that you are living with, to the children that are growing up in your presence, to your wife or to your siblings. The prayers offered in public should be short and to the point. We are looking at the propriety in prayer and this is the series, Our Higher Calling. We are laying the foundation and then we shall put on another gear and go on to other things after we have laid the foundation. God does not require us to make the season of worship tedious by lengthy petitions. A few minutes is long enough for any ordinary public petition. There may be instances where supplication is in a special manner indicted by the Spirit of God and you will find that uh, the prayer will be long. But uh, in public, prayer should be short and to the point. It is not the time now to mention everything that uh, you have ever wanted to mention in public when you have neglected a time for secret prayer for mentioning such a things. When you gather with your family, when you gather with the children in public or in church worship, prayer should be short and to the point unless the Spirit of God moves in a manner that he is in control of prayer and it goes for such a long period. And uh, another thing in propriety in prayer, high-flown language is inappropriate in prayer. Whether the petition be offered in the pulpit, in the family circle, or in secret, especially sure the one offering public prayer use symbol language that others may understand what is said and unite with the petition. This can be demonstrated better when you look at the Lord's Prayer. It was such a simple prayer that everyone could understand, a child could follow and even say Amen. Sometimes, this is Gospel Workers, in, uh, page 176. Uh, sometimes we pray and even the children don't understand what we are praying about. They end up not even saying amen. They just open their eyes because they wonder what is happening. Prayer should be in a language that is simple, a language that can be understood with the people who are present so that children may join into petition and other people. It's not, it doesn't show uh, how sanctimonious and sacrilegious you are if you have a high-flown language actually. 
Let those who pray and those who speak pronounce their words properly and speak in clear, distinct, even tones. Prayer, if properly offered, is a power for good. Satan rejoices when the prayers offered to God are almost inaudible. Let God's people learn how to speak and pray in a way that will properly represent the great truth they possess. Let the testimonies born and the prayers offered be clear and distinct. Thus, God will be glorified. And I recommend... Uh, 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 mind, character, and personality, and uh, the section there is a section for voice and speech. Let everyone be able to read it and understand how we can speak better, how we can pray better, and be audible. And even even without using the microphone and the loudspeakers, be able to speak to a congregation of a thousand, three thousand, four thousand without using even the microphone. By cultivating your voice and cultivating your tone, you can be even louder enough and uh, uh, learning how to breathe in and how to breathe out can even give you strength to be able to speak for a long time. But that is uh, another session. And so let the prayers, let the words in prayer be pronounced in a, a clear, distinct, even tone so that um, uh, they are audible and they can be uh, understandable. Counsel to parents, teachers, and students, page 245. In our devotional meetings, our voices should express by prayer and praise our adoration of the Heavenly Father, that all may know that we worship God in simplicity and truth and in the beauty of holiness. These are the propriety in worship that we are looking at. And uh, uh, letter 29-1901, this is beautiful, also found in manuscript release, page uh, manuscript release 167. February 21, 1901. God has given a taste to all the world. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generation. For a perpetual covenant, it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And uh, I just want you to look at something. This is the Lord's test, the Sabbath. Let us not descend from it to man-made test. There are people who are making man-made tests. The Lord had set his test in the Bible and in inspiration. And man doesn't have to set tests. Listen, this week productions of the people setting tests, man-made tests, presented to the church for their instruction and practice are the production of minds who need the one teach them the first principles of the gospel of Christ. I have received from the Lord warnings to give to Seventh-day Adventist churches. He has instructed me that Satan is the inventor of an important non-sensual fables, which he presents to human minds to eclipse the grand elevating purifying truth for this time. The enemy strive by this miserable invention to lower the sacred principles of truth to lead the mind away from the health-giving truth to sham ceremonies. And listen now this. Satan is not pleased when the people of God demonstrate the ennobling, elevating influence that pure truth has upon human minds. He is the author of the silly fables which some have been presenting. The cheap, weak test which he leads men to advocate should not be received or tolerated in our churches. What are these silly fables and uh, what are these cheap, weak tests he is presenting? Look here. It will seem that the ideas of believers praying with their eyes open as though looking into heaven is one of Satan's cheap fables. So Satan is presenting a fable, a cheap, weak thing that um, people should pray with their eyes open and the taking off the shoes when entering the house of worship is another production of his. So these two fables, praying while the eyes are open and uh, taking off shoes when you uh, go to the house of, of God. These are man-made tests. These are fables from the devil. God has given us tests. The prophet continues, the prophetess continues, the Lord is not pleased when his people who have received such a grand noble truth from his word allow their minds to dwell on the weak, silly fables. These fables that for the Lord to hear you must 
pray while your eyes are open and you are looking in heaven and uh, you must take off your shoes while entering in the house of, uh, of worship. These are silly, weak fables, the prophet says in letter 29, 1901. These deceived souls are told that Sister White prays with her eyes open. No, Sister White closed her eyes when she prays, that with spiritual vision she may behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. And you may ask yourself, don't we have examples where actually people prayed while their eyes were open and they were looking at heaven, Jesus being the perfect example? Yes, we have such examples, but this is not a test unto Christians that they must open their eyes and take off their shoes uh, while praying or when entering in the house of God. These are man-made tests and they are not the test of God. We are looking at the propriety in worship. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, page 44. Something it is wrong to try to observe order in the worship of God, but I have seen that it's not dangerous to observe order in the Church of God. I have seen that confusion is displeasing to the Lord and that there should be order in praying and also in singing. We should not come to the house of God to pray for our families unless deep feeling shall lead us while the Spirit of God is convicting them. So this matter of praying for our family members publicly and mentioning their sins or mentioning their weakness, no, this is not something that should be done in the house of God unless the Spirit leads us to do so. Unless there is a feel deep uh, leading of the Spirit. If you know that the Spirit is not in this, you shouldn't be doing that. Uh, we should um, constrain ourselves. We should have order in worship. When we are in the church of God, where, where, when we are in the house of God, those prayers which are mentioned publicly are prayers that have been allowed to be mentioned publicly by those who have offered their petitions. But now coming to the church to pray for our families and then mentioning their sins and all these uh, uh, shameful things, this is not in the order of God. This is not propriety in worship. The prophet says, generally the proper place to pray for our families is at the family altar. When the subject of our prayers are at a distance, the closet is the proper place to plead with God for them. When in the house of God we should pray for a present blessing and should expect God to hear and answer prayers, such a meeting will be lively and interesting. We, we make people wonder about our families. We make people be shocked at our prayers when we utter some things in public which we shouldn't be uttering actually. And uh, my life today... Uh, Page 19, there are two kinds of prayer, the prayer of form and the prayer of faith. We are looking at the topic, propriety in worship, and the series is a higher calling. The repetition of said customary phrases when the heart feels no need of God is formal prayer. We should be extremely careful in all our prayers to speak the words of the heart and to say only what we mean. All the flowery words and our command are not equivalent to one holy desire. The most eloquent prayers are but vain repetition if they do not express the true sentiments of the heart. Don't farfetch the words and bring them in the heart to pray to the Lord. Just pray what is in your heart, what your mind feels. Pray it to the Lord. Don't think and uh, of other things that are unimportant to the heart at that time. You, you are talking to God. Prayer is talking to God as you talk to a friend. Don't, don't, don't manufacture prayer. Pray what is in your heart. When you pray, use not vain repetition as the heathen do, Matthew 6, 7. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Consecrate yourself to God in the morning, steps to Christ, page 70. Make this your very first work. This is a daily matter. Each morning, consecrate yourself to God for that day. Surrender all your plans to Him. To be carried out or given up, His providence shall indicate. Thus, day by day, you may be giving your life into the hands of God, and thus your life will be molded more and more after the life of Christ. When you wake up, the first thing on your lip, it should be talking to your God and doing a Bible study. And in the evening, the last thing that you have to go to bed with is a Bible study and then a prayer. After that, there should ne not be anything that uh, you engage yourself. And uh, I know I am a victim of this, but... Uh, by God's grace, I, I have to start practicing what I teach today. That uh, when I wake up, no Facebook, no anything, but I pray, I do Bible study, pray, then I can look at anything else. When the evening reaches, I do my Bible study with my family and 
I pray and then no more phones and all that things that follow. When we wake up, we have to meet the face of God. When we are going to sleep, the last thing that should be on our mind is the face of God also. You know, sometimes we may go to sleep when the mind is um, a full of things which are not ennobling and then we may never wake up. And when we wake up, it is the resurrection morning and we are found on the wrong side. And we know very well that uh, when you resurrect, you pick up from where you left, according to the book of uh, Revelation chapter 20, Revelation chapter uh, 21, and the, looking at the book of Great Conrovers. As we went down, that is how we shall come up. And so it is good when you wake up, you have you talk with your God, you do your Bible study and pray. Then you can look at other things. And uh, when you go uh, to sleep, do your Bible study and pray and leave the phones, leave everything aside. And then God will be able to be manifested in your life. And I have found that every time I go down to sleep, when I have just done prayer and I don't look at my phone, when I wake up, there's a song on my heart. The Lord gives me a particular song. I wake up singing and then uh, it guides me in, in the morning prayers. And uh, uh, when I do the will of God in the morning and then set the phone aside and touch it after all these things, the day rolls out perfectly. And so... These are the things that we have to be practical on them and not let the devil steal the hours that we have to spend with the Lord with the Facebooking, answering messages and all those things. I, I believe the Lord is calling us to a higher standard and if we respond, then we shall be a peculiar people unto the Lord. Daily prayer is us essential growth in grace and even to the spiritual life itself. As it is temporal food to the physical well-being, we should accustom ourselves to often lift the thoughts to God in prayer. If the minds wander us, we must bring it back by persevering effort. Habit will finally make it easy. When uh, your day is so preoccupied with the things of the world and it feels that you are not moving and uh, the things are becoming harder, instead of complaining, instead of uh, doing anything, the best thing to do is to pray. And when you pray, your soul is refreshed. Just when you feel hunger and you eat, the body is refreshed and it gets energy. As you go through the spiritual battles and the daily mental activities that actually brings you much, a word of prayer will rejuvenate your life and you will be able to be sustained through what you are going through. And uh, uh, I remember the story that uh, Brother Zadok was giving unto us that... Um, uh, Sometimes his phone gets a problem and uh, uh, instead of thinking a lot and uh, uh, even calling somebody to uh, assist him through another phone uh, of the problem he, he, he has on his phone, he just uh, kneels down and he prays and the phone starts working. This is the connection that really we will want to have in our life that uh, we can speak to the Lord and the Lord can answer our prayers. If we have such a connection with the Lord, amidst all the afflictions, amidst all the problems of the day that we go through, we can utter prayer and the Lord, the things shall be done unto us. The Lord will uh, remove the burden that we are having. And so we need to be practical in our life, in our daily prayer. And uh, we need to dedicate everything uh, to, to the Lord. We need to dedicate everything to, to, to the Lord. Religion must begin with emptying and purifying the heart and must be nurtured by daily prayer. Must be nurtured by daily prayer. When you rise in the morning, do you feel your helpless and your need of strength from God? And do you humbly, heartily make known your wants to your heavenly Father? If so, angels mark your prayers. And if these prayers have not gone forth out of pain lips, when you are in danger of unconsciously doing wrong and exerting an influence which will lead others to do wrong, you, your guardian angel will be by your side, prompting you to better cause, choosing your words for you, and influencing your actions. Selected Messages, Book 2, page 311. I have received letters questioning me in regard to the proper attitude to be taken by person offering prayer to the sovereign of the universe. Where have our brethren obtained the idea that they should stand upon their feet when praying to God? One was asked to lead in prayer before Sister White should speak to the people. But as I beheld him standing upright upon his feet while his lips were about to open in prayer to God, 
My soul was stirred within me to give him an open review. Calling him by name, I said, get down upon your knees. This is the proper position always. Now, this is so much interesting that even we have churches where we have tiles, where we have carpets and our homes which are cemented, but we will never want to kneel down in prayer. We want to stand in the presence of God, a holy God. We are so neglectful of the reverence that we have to offer to the Lord that uh, we just see it is as usual to stand in the presence of God and pray. No, this is not the thing. We find even Jesus Christ himself, who is God, knelt down and prayed to his Father. And what a perfect example for us who are dust. If the divine being could kneel down and pray to God, how about human beings who are just dust? Who are nothing and they are and, and even the channels of their prayers are unclean and they have to be sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, we should think about this thing. We should think about propriety in prayer. And uh, look at Luke chapter 22, verse 41. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and knelt, kneeled down and prayed. This is Jesus himself. Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up, Acts 9.40. Stephen, they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep, Acts chapter 5, 7, verse 59 and 60. And so we have examples in the Bible, the blessed Lord who was God, who was a divine being knelt and prayed, the great apostle Paul Peter prayed, and Stephen, who had a vision of God in, in heaven, knelt down and prayed. How about us who have never even had an experience with the Lord? Shall we not copy the examples of uh, the greater people who have been before us? Look at uh, Acts chapter 20, verse 36. When he had thus spoken, he knelt down and prayed with them all. When he had accomplished those days, we departed and went away, and they all brought us on our way with wives and children till we were out of the city, and we kneeled down and on the shore and prayed. They are kneeling in the dust and praying. We have houses we cannot kneel down. We have churches which are so well built, but we cannot kneel down and talk to our Father which are in heaven. It is a shame, brethren. It is not something that should be happening. We are looking at propriety of, of uh, propriety in worship. Uh, and we are looking at uh, examples in the Bible. What is the better position? At the evening sacrifice, I rose up from my heaviness, and having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hand unto the Lord my God, and said, O oh my God, I am ashamed and blush to lift up my face to thee, my God, for our iniquities are increased over our head, and our trespass is grown up unto the heavens. Ezra 9.5.6 O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Psalms 95 verse 6. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great apostle uh, Paul. He knelt down and prayed. And so having this uh, uh, a cloud of witnesses of the right position in prayer, why are we so negligent when we appear before the presence of the Lord? You look at the angels and they veil themselves when they are in the presence of the Lord. They show reverence. But the children of God who are sinful, who are seeking a higher calling, who wants to be saved from their sin, they will never bring themselves to a point of kneeling before the Lord. To bow down when in prayer to God is the proper attitude to occupy. This act of worship was required of the three Hebrew captives in Babylon, but such an act was homage to be rendered to God alone. The sovereign of the world, the rule of the universe, and these three Hebrews refuse to give such an honor to any idol, even though composed of pure gold. Both in public and private worship, it is our duty to bow down upon our knees before God. When we offer our petitions to Him, this act shows our dependence upon Him. Selected Messages, Book 2, page 312, continued on. At the dedication of the temple, Solomon stood facing the altar. In the court of the temple was a brazen scaffold or platform, and after sending this, he stood and lifted up his hands to heaven and blessed the immense congregation of Israel, and all the congregation of Israel stood. 
uh, for Solomon had made a brazen scaffold of five cubits long and five cubits broad and three cubits high and had set it in the midst of the court and upon it he stood and kneeled down upon his knees before all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven. Second Chronicles 6, 13. So Solomon knelt down and prayed and the congregation did so and after he had finished he stood up and blessed the children of Israel. What appropriate a, a, a position to take in prayer. The lengthy prayer which he then offered was appropriate for the occasion. It was inspired of God breathing the sentiments of the loftiest piety blended with the deepest humility. So you can see that this was a public prayer but it was long and yet we have been told that we shouldn't be having long public prayers but we are told that when the spirit takes over and indicts the prayer or controls the prayer and it is long we are to remain subdued in the presence of God and also be petitioning our wants before the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father waits to bestow upon us the fullness of his blessing. It is a privilege to drink largely at the fountain of boundless love, and it is through the prayer steps to Christ, page 94. Uh, what a wonder it is that we pray so little. God is ready and willing to hear the sincere prayer of the humblest of his children, and yet there is much manifest reluctance on our part to make known our wants to God. Steps to Christ, page 94, continued on. Uh, it says, The angels love to bow before God. They love to be near Him. They regard communion with God as their highest joy. And yet the children of earth, who need so much the help that God only can give, seem satisfied to walk without the light of His Spirit, the companion of His presence. Look at the life of uh, men who shook the world. Men like uh, uh, Martin Luther. They dedicated hours and hours in prayers. Martin Luther, we are told that he could pray for four hours. Look at the people like uh, William Miller, the people who actually could pray until things happened. The Lord had their servants. And uh, in 1844, you look at Hiram Edison when they were in the barn. They prayed and after they had prayed, they felt the comfort and he decided to go to the field and just to relax his soul about the great disappointment and then he saw the heavens open and he was shown Jesus Christ coming from the holy place to the most holy place. How so fitting should be that we seek the Lord in prayer much more even in our secret or when the Lord entices our prayers in the public so that we may seek his presence and our wants may be fulfilled. Christ our example will repair to the Mount of Olives and there Amid the overshadowing trees, will spend the entire night in prayer. He who was himself without the taint of sin saw the need of the prayer. How about us? As he became a suppliant, seeking at the hand of his father fresh supplies of strength, and coming forth refreshed and invigorated. How was he refreshed and invigorated? By spending the whole night in prayer. He identified himself with the suffering humanity and gave them an example of the necessity of prayer. His nature was without the tent of sin and the Son of Man. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, page 528. As the Son of Man, he prayed to the Father, showing that human nature requires all the divine support which man can obtain, that he may be blessed for duty and prepared for trial. This Savior, who prayed for those that felt no need of prayer and wept for those that felt no need of tears, is now before the throne to receive and present to his Father the petitions of those whom he prayed on earth. The example of Christ is for us to follow. Prayer is a necessity in our labor for the salvation of soul. God alone can give this the increase of the seed we sow. We pray little, little strength. We pray more, more strength. And this should be in your closed, in your closet. Seek the Lord in prayer. Don't be just so quick to come out of your knees. Spend hours in prayer with your Lord. It was in hours of solitary prayer that Jesus in his earth life received wisdom and power. Let the youth follow his example in finding at dawn and treat light a quiet season for communion with their Father in heaven. And throughout the day, let them lift up their hearts to God. And looking at Lamentation chapter 2, look at the book of Lamentations uh, written by the prophet of the Lord, uh, Jeremiah. Lamentation chapter 2. And... Uh, I'll look at verse 19. I believe that is the verse. If I'm wrong, then sorry for it. Uh, Lamentations chapter 2, verses 19. It says, 
Arise, cry out in the night, in the beginning of the watches, pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. Of every street. How do you pour out something? How do you pour out water? It is in, in an overflowing manner. This is how we are being told to pour our hearts to the Lord in the nightly watches. In the 3 a.m. prayers, let us pour our hearts to the Lord for the work ahead, for the, those who are hungering and thirsting for righteousness, and for those who doesn't know they are left from their right, they are just living as if there is no tomorrow. Let us pour our hearts unto the Lord for them. And when we have done this, when we go out for evangelism, then we are assured that the Lord will work our way. I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand. Fear not. I'll help the Isaiah 41 13. He strengthened us in prayer. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 8, page 178. In Christ's name, our petition is sent to the Father. He intercedes in our behalf, and the Father lays open all the treasures of His grace for our uh, appropriation, for us to enjoy and impart to others. As in my name, Christ says, I do not say that I'll pray the Father for you, for the Father Himself loveth you. Make use of my name. This will give your prayers efficiency, and the Father will give you the riches of grace. Wherefore, ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, says that, Call on me. What is it to call on the name of the Lord? Diligently call on him, and I'll show you things that you have never seen. This is what he says in the book of Jeremiah, 30, uh, 33. The Desire of Ages, page 668. But to pray in Christ's name means much. It means that we are to accept his character, manifest his spirit, and work his works. The Savior's promise is given on condition. If you love me, he says, keep my commandments. He saves men, not in sin, but from sin. And those who love him will show their love by obedience. Ask and you shall receive according to your faith, be it done to you. Matthew 9, 29. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I'll do it. John 14, 14. And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Matthew 21, 22. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that has promised. And Hebrews chapter uh, 11, verse 6, that, 11, verse 6 says that whoever cometh to him must believe that he is really a rewarder of them who seek him. Uh, uh, diligently. We must seek the Lord in prayer in a diligent way and then he will reward our prayers. Pray in faith and be sure to bring your lives into harmony with your petitions that you may receive the blessings of which you pray. Let not your faith weaken for the blessings received are proportionate to the faith exercised. Not one sincere supplication is lost. The channel is open. The stream is flowing. Stream is flowing. It carries with it healing properties. Pouring forth, restoring current of life and health and salvation. If you need life, if you need health, and if you need salvation, the best way to seek for them, it is in prayer. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Propriety in prayer, Psalm 66, 18. Let us not regard iniquity in our hearts. If we regard iniquity in our hearts, the Lord will not hear us. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, page 332. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Christ says, Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. What do your prayers amount to while you regard iniquity in your hearts? Unless you make a thorough change, you will not, you will not far hence. The prayers of the wicked are like an abomination to God, but the ear of the Lord is attentive to those who actually loves his law. And so uh, one of the proprieties in prayer is not to regard iniquity in our heart, to confess all our sins, and he will be able to forgive us and answer our prayers. So there are conditions to the fulfillment of God's uh, Promises and prayer can never take the place of duty. If you love me, Christ says, keep my commandments. Those who bring their petitions to God claiming his promise while they do not comply with the condition insult Jehovah. They bring the name of Christ as their authority for the fulfillment of the promise, but they do not 
uh, but they do not those things that will show faith in Christ uh, for him. And so uh, the best way to seek the Lord in prayer is not to regard iniquity in our hearts, is to do away with uh, our sinful self and not desire uh, 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 ourselves being seen. And so uh, uh, how I pray that these things will help us, how I pray that these things will move us closer to Christ and uh, as we seek the Lord in these last days, let us know that uh, he is not the Lord who is far away, but he is a God who is near us and able to save us even unto the uttermost. The Lord Jesus Christ is our brother in heaven. And uh, let us keep in contact with him. How, how often do you keep contact with your brothers and sisters on earth? How far more important will it be to keep in contact with the our heavenly brother who is interceding for us. There is humanity at the throne and all he is needing is to hear us speak to him and he will be able to fulfill the desires of, the, of our hearts. Otherwise, may the Lord bless you and uh, may you seek to attain this higher calling, not by strength, not by might, but by the Spirit of God we shall be enabled to do these things. Let us close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we glorify your name. We are not a God who is a distant from us, but uh, you are there to listen to us. As we commune with our earthly friends, O oh Lord, we will commune with thee. As we speak one another to our brother, so we should speak to our brother, Jesus Christ. And we pray that we may have all the reverence that is needed and all the propriety that is needed in prayer. And so teach us like little children, and not only teaching us to eschew evil, but teaching us and giving us strength to do good. In the name of the Son, we ask of these things. Amen.